Well, it's been an interesting start to 2018, hasn't it? Welcome to the first Sit Down Saturday of 2018. The title is not quite as clickbait as it seems, but it kind of is. Today we're going to look at the couple of things that have already happened fresh four days into 2018. We are currently on the fourth day, and Lord, who knows what will happen on Friday, but I'm not around to record then, so... Yeah, this is recorded on Thursday, very obviously. The first thing I want to talk about is North Korea opened up the year with a New Year's speech and just let everyone know, by the way, we do still have nukes, or we do have nukes, and they're operational guys. I've actually got Kim Jong-un. I don't know if I said his name wrong, and I'm sorry, Kim, if you're watching this, if I've butchered that. Um, he basically said he's got a button smack bang in the middle of his desk. A bit like this. This is like what I use as my nuclear button. When I'm annoyed, I grab an angry lens and throw it. Nothing really too bad came of that. In fact, North and South Korea spoke over the phone. They spoke and communicated for the first time in literally years. Apparently there's a special line in the demilitarized zone uh, between North and South Korea, where there's literally just a phone, I think, where South Korea can call North Korea, North Korea can call South Korea. South Korea have been calling North Korea twice a day since February 2016. And they ain't been picking up. It's kind of sad when you think about it. It genuinely pulls on my heartstrings a little bit that. I'm just like, oh, poor guy. Like, the guy whose job that is just... Yeah, they're not ants. Call again. I just feel like that's genuinely probably the most positive thing to happen this year. Regardless of what they're talking about, they're talking. Mum and dad are tr starting to make up again. But wait! Here's Donald Trump. Oh, he's heard what Kim Jong-un says. And he said, and I quote, I'm reading it right now. <laughs> so I can't. <laughs> I've got this this uh, plugin on Google Chrome that turns uh, Donald Trump's tweets into children's... Look at this. I mean, how am I supposed to read that out loud? It's not... North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone from his depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I too have a nuclear button but it is much bigger and more powerful than his. And this one works. Donald, 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 Donald. I don't condone Kim Jong-un telling everyone he has a nuclear button. I genuinely actually think that's just stupid. But don't respond. Ignore. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Kim. Thanks for letting us know. And then they start talking to South Korea. Like, he didn't. And I don't, I don't think he did anyway ruin it but that could have so ruined communications between north and south korea it genuinely scares me like that actually is one of the things that makes me not sleep at night that and the fact i've had insomnia since the age of 11 but that's that's one of them we're gonna go from there to the logan paul story and don't we're finishing off on something positive not this all right but i did just want to touch on this because it's a weird one it's it's very strange um i don't know how i feel about it genuinely i feel like logan paul putting out that vlog, editing it and uploading it. And I'm not sure if he edits his own vlogs and stuff, but still going through that process and uploading it was ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Shouldn't have shown the body. I lit like as much as this is a topic in the video, it's like this happened. Okay. That's what this video is. And I don't want to say whether I support it or don't support it. Cause I'm, I am weirdly enough somewhere in the middle of that s changes need to happen. I don't think for one second that his entire YouTube channel should get shut down because when you do compare it to the rest of his content, you know, he's he's made, I don't know, nearly 500 videos, maybe more, I don't know. Of not like the best content, but not exactly negative content. And then he, he made that one thing that was really like, boom. And as I say, I think that my favorite thing about the internet is that everyone has a voice, everyone has an opinion. And that, whoa, that shook 2018. If that could happen, a day earlier in fact it technically did um yeah then we could have just closed it off and left it in 2017 and maybe we wouldn't see logan paul for the rest of 2018 but genuinely i don't think he should shut down his youtube channel just as a statement the way he reacted on camera i thoroughly believe was a hundred percent real and i don't think the laughter was to offend anyone I don't want to get all woe is me, but I have been in a very similar situation and reacted like kind of the same way. It, it, it I don't know how to say this that without, because it does sound bad saying, oh, I reacted the same way we laughed. I didn't laugh, but I tried to find something in that situation because more than anything, like you're shocked and it's awkward. I know that sounds weird to say. It, oh, this is awkward. You know, I've just 
this yeah but yeah but yeah as far as editing and uploading the footage genuinely look idiot that is that is stupid it's not i don't think it's career ending but at the same time people said he should have recorded it not included the body and turned it into something positive but with the bad press they'd have anyway, they'd be better off not uploading it at all because people would just doubt that it happened. People would want proof anyway. In uh, like, and as well, that sounds sick, just saying, oh yeah, people want to see a dead body. Uh, again, not condoning it on YouTube, not condoning it anywhere. But if he didn't put that in there, he didn't have to put as much. He would have been called a liar. Um, and if he put a, a slight clip in there, it would have been too much. He put, I don't think it should have been that at all. I don't know. I watched the entire video. I watched every single moment of that video and some people are watching it. I say in the wrong context, I think in the wrong frame of mind. You're watching it out of anger because you're, you've heard about this. You've gone out of your way to find that video and your mind is exploding with anger right now. And you're just watching this kid what you think is taunt in a dead body and i i don't think the the reaction or what he did what he did then on the day was taunting or or, or like offensive in any way i think recording it was fair enough but like i'm just looking at the reaction of him like on the day i don't feel, i don't feel like that was to offend anyone and i feel like it was an automatic reaction not of just some american chotch um but of someone who's like scarred and just trying to get over it like me as an adult now, if something crazy happened and, and like something crazy happened last year that was nothing like that, but my way of dealing with it was just like, huh, uh, get over it. I didn't make a video about it. I didn't do any of this about it. But yeah, that's that's the way I reacted as, as a 22 year old adult. And I feel like in that scenario, I would have acted the same. I would have said, maybe let's not let's put the cameras down, call the police. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I probably wouldn't have gone out and made a video about it. But at the same time, I'm just, like my, I, I keep saying this and this is very back and forth my mind's in a million places I'm trying to be positive in, in every respect I can clearly see why this was offensive alright 100% I just see also I don't know how he would have portrayed it and gone like oh guys we're going to go camping today and then cut man something bad really happened we we found a dead body because either way that that that's like click, clickbait it, I don't know. Mental health is not something that should ever be joked about or or used to profit from. I feel like a lot of YouTubers went in on it and used it as clickbait to profit themselves. You could argue that my title is literally exactly that, but I'm look, I'm a tiny channel. Cut me some slack, all right? And I, I don't know. I don't know what I can say and what I can't say because I'm just some tiny little 350 subscribed YouTube channel without a voice. And maybe if that's my opinion, rightly so. I don't know. I don't, again, I don't really know what my opinion is on that. But yes, that's that. Now onto the final topic, and we're brightening things up a lot. Not in the not in the edit, because that's dim that down a little bit. There we go. Okay. ITV news. If you don't know what that is, if you're in America, if you're anywhere over the world and you don't know what ITV is, ITV is a is a network like a TV network here. They have news. They have I don't know what else ITV have. But they have news. <laughs> and a couple of nights ago, there was a fire alarm in their news studio. And the presenter signed off in the most British way possible. And I genuinely, I enjoyed it so much. We're gonna just quickly watch it together because it was hilarious. Okay, well, as you can probably tell, we have a fire alarm. You could probably tell that before we went into that report, but we still have a fire alarm here and we're not quite sure what to do about it. So I'm really, really sorry about this, but I'm afraid we have to evacuate the building. These things happen and unfortunately it's happened tonight and we have very little choice. So I really apologize. We'll get back to you with the rest of the program if we possibly can. Uh, but for now, uh, it's good night. 